Okay, it says that this Hangout is live. It's live. Okay. Okay, it says that this oh. Hangout is live. <laughs> Stop that. Okay, well, <clears throat> peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snubbed Up Seven. I am also your soul brother, number one. And we are live tonight, very spontaneous. And I decided to. Uh, that we need to go live because myself and who's joining me uh, on this Google Hangout is our uh, assistant uh, minister, uh, Brother Tali. We were having a pretty good conversation and I really didn't want to interrupt that conversation, but I didn't feel right that we should have that conversation alone and not, and not bring it to the public because it's something that I feel we need to talk about and discuss in this in this matter here. Uh, of course, setting this up for a Google Hangout and setting this up for, for Facebook throws our conversation off, but we're gonna try to get back into that discussion. But before we continue, I wanna say this and make this like Richard Nixon say back in the back in the day, I wanna make this perfectly clear. And before I make this perfectly clear, I want to uh, send shouts out to my audience on Facebook. That audience is increasing little by little on Facebook because I know at one time uh, there was nobody there at all. And now people are starting to, when I come on live, they're starting to come and, and join me uh, in the conversation. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, Facebook. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters on YouTube. And uh, with that said, uh, don't want to keep you long. I don't want to be long either. But we're just going to have this conversation. I thought that it's something interesting. Uh, it needs to be shared with uh, the public. Okay, let me set this up again. I was just looking at my... Um, matter of fact, hold on. Let me put this link in my Facebook, so if somebody wanna join us from Facebook, they could do that. So just hold on a minute. Hold on a minute here. Plus this is spontaneous, it gives people, while I'm messing around here, it gives people a chance to notice that we are live. And maybe a few people wanna join the conversation, at least come to the chat room, Well, yeah, so, okay, that's done. Put that there, let's set this back up. I do, uh, I do, <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. Hold on, Brother Tully. Hey, Sister Brittany. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Hey. Yo, you know, I wanted to see you took photos of me. I wanted to see you pictures of me finally so you could see who, who I am, who this dark skin, who this dark skin person is. Oh, wow. That's that's cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I'm actually I'm on live. <laughs> I heard that. I wanted to send it to you, but you ended up picking up the phone. Oh. <laughs> Did you?
you hear what I said? I said I'm, I'm on live. You being recorded. Oh, well, yes, I know that you are live. That's why I'm happy that you is alive. Oh, my God. <laughs> you had me worrying for a little bit and all that. How, how was you worried? Because I thought you wasn't alive, Lord. <laughs> you thought I wasn't alive? <laughs> you said I'm about to lie, man. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, where you at, Lord? No, I where told you. I told. You? I told you. I'm. I'm live on the air. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm live on the air. So what that mean? I'm on a conference call, brother Talib. Brother Talib, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, see, I'm on a conference call. I'm live on YouTube. You hear me? Hey! <laughs> you, you, can, you, can, you, can you can join the conversation or we can talk later. Hold on, hold on. I want to, like, you know, show my thanks for what I mean. You know what I'm saying? I think so. Bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all you know. <laughs> well, I always yeah. saw my cousin and I had a shit that I wanted to get there, but... Oh, it's not it's down there. That's that that's the uh that's the I sister like sister Brittany. Yeah. You know that sister I was telling you called me all the time. Keep that like that. Is that what y'all was to the like then? Okay. I guess. Do you want him to come out? Hey, how you doing? You know me? Yeah. Hey, Brittany. Hello. Yeah, Brittany. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm live. If you want to join the conversation, or I can call you. I can call you back later. How you doing, that Syria? Serious in the house. Hey, hey Brit Miss Brittany. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Hey, uh -uh. yeah. If you want, you know, I'm on an air. Hey, I wanted to see that, but you were just picking up the phone. Why you been picking? Why you? What's your? What's been going on? Hey, what's your name? Hey, I'm like, 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 I'm we're talking about the confused direction of black liberation. The confused direction of black liberation. Yeah. And yeah. what regard and what sense and what essence. Let me know what, what path y'all what have y'all already put out there so I could we just we just uh, we just got we started. We actually huh? we just got started. Okay, well let me tell y'all what a what a confusion in black, black liberation and the reason why black people are not being liberated. Y'all want me to tell you what I believe it is? Go ahead, sis. So black people are not being liberated because a lot of people like to hear themselves talk, mm -hmm. but they're not doing nothing about it, right? Right. And then within the black liberation, we have this feminist MGTOW tone, whatever the fuck they call that. They have the feminist movement. Black women are trying to jump on that. And then black men are on this MGTOW tile thing, right? So within the liberation movement, you have black women that keep trying to say the things that black men are not doing correctly. And then you also have black men trying to say what black women are not doing correctly. And what that does is it causes a separation, although we are supposed to be trying to collaborate so that we are no longer 
um, you know, disadvantaged in within the system, right? Mm -hmm. However, a disadvantaged group of people keep trying to disadvantage each other and keep trying to outsmart or supreme supremacist each other. So you have black women trying to outsmart or out uh outdo black men and vice versa. And so that's gonna always be a problem. Now another thing is, is that you have black men that's also trying to take on this misogynist disposition that white males take on, and you have black women trying to take on this feminist disposition that white women take on. And all it is is just confusing us because to be honest with you, there is no um outside of the uh the actual um gender difference, there is no difference within how we get treated within this society, technically speaking, right? Mm -hmm. So um that is the first issue is that we keep complaining to, about each other to each other when we're all disenfranchised and neither one of us can do anything about the complaints other than just stop complaining to each other. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that you have black people within the so-called black liberation movements that also look towards white people to give them some type of funding or try to give them some type of reparation or help or handout. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it draws confusion because when you do that, you're going to start, you're still looking to white supremacy to give you some type of um, guide or give you some type of answer to your struggle or not necessarily to your struggle, but to your um, uh, to your uprising within that struggle. The same people that colonized you and oppressed you are not going to help you. I don't give a fuck how nice they talk. They're not going to do anything for you. And so that's another thing that is also an issue within the Black Liberation Movement is that you have, just like with the NAACP, you know, they got black, they got white people at the forefront. Or you just like you have with the, the Black Lives Matter movement, you had that, you got that white boot, Sean, whatever the fuck, Sean, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the name is. Mm -hmm. So within these movements, you always have a white face, and black people are always saying, you know, we can't do anything without white people, and that in of itself is a problem. And then they want to go back to, to the Malcolm X's and the Martin Luther King's and talk about how they got killed, so they feel like they need to have white people um, in it. The other problem is, is that you have, black people have been so accustomed to living off of other people for their wants and needs, such as the Indian man in your environment who is to give you your gas or the Chinese mm -hmm. people who sell you your hair products or your health care products or whatever, the white man who sells you your pharmaceuticals and um, every other race in between that is basically just taking over your environment. And some black people are just uh, comfortable with that and accustomed to that. Like these people's ice is colder than the black man's ice, so we don't support each other. And we might be able to talk in these little these little circular events or whatever, but for the most part, outside of these little events and these little talks, black people really don't stick together, and that is the big issue. And that's the reason why the liberation movement or whatever is not is not is not productive. But then I also think about the spiritual aspect of it as well, um, biblically speaking, where it says in the Bible that we are going to go through these curses. So sometimes you wonder, like, you know, um, if this is something that's meant to happen, what is the point of actually just talking in circles, just live your best life and let that work for your seed and your offspring so that they'll know how to better deal with their own race of people and not be so Europeanized in their way of thinking to where they're, they're hurting other black people as opposed to helping other black people. But also, too, we have to understand that the Black Liberation Movement is not really going to, to work. And I'm going to tell you why. You have so many black people in this system of white supremacy that are literally white people in black face. They literally think and act and, and believe what white people think and act and believe. And so because you have that and you have people that look like you that are, um, you know, trying to work with white people and other races of people to keep you oppressed, that liberation movement is going to be very slim to non happening because you are going to need almost every black person on call. Every white person in America, the UK, and everywhere else, even, even in South Africa, they're all on call with white supremacy. So you, you can't have a liberation without the entire diaspora of black people being liberated. This is not going to happen. Wow, you said a lot in a few minutes. Woo! It's a lot to take in, sister. 
I am glad that you called him. Glad to hear from you. Yes, uh, Brother yeah, Talib, uh, Brother Talib. Yes, sir. Did you did you want to add a little something to what that sister just said? say this uh you know i used to believe that <clears throat> through the diaspora of the entire uh dark skin population of this world that things could get accomplished but it, it is seen for over centuries and even during the pre-existence of european colonialization on the continent of africa that um, you know, we never really got along in terms of different, what you call tribes or how you want to call it, ethnic groups of people. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this has been an on, this has been an ongoing thing. Yeah, we're here. You know, this has been Hello? an ongoing thing. You can't hear. You know. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. I can hear. Oh, okay. I thought it was placed on you because I heard like a ding noise. Okay, I'm okay. fine. But uh, yeah, my good brother, as I was saying, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my thing is this: is that uh, like I said, this has been an ongoing thing before even the Europeans start colonizing. You know. Darker skin populations throughout. Well, can, I, can I interject in that, please? Can I can I say one thing? And I and I do apologize. No, I mean, you, cut me, you had cut me off, sister. Could I, when I get done, then you can say what you have to say. I mean, just out of respect. Okay, no, I would say that. But anyway, um, I mean, like I said before, I've always thought. That that would be a good idea, but as I studied mm -hmm. and researched, even like I said before, the Europeans even got involved in our lives as darker skinned people throughout this planet Earth. That we were always at war with each other. We were always caught up in division. Okay, to the point where we hated each other so much that we didn't even want to identify with each other, even based on the fact that we got dark skin or woolly hair. You see what I'm saying? And it's still like that today, especially even in the continent, as we can see. So, uh, I mean, if that would to ever, if that would would to ever happen, it would be like Earth replenishing itself. Hmm with different people in terms of population existence because uh, the, the mindset that our people have now, especially um, as a result of European colonialization and slavery, it makes that difficult. And then, even though we know that we are being oppressed not only by Europeans, but by Asians as well, as well as Arabs, since Arabs are enslaving darker skinned people in certain countries in Africa like Libya, Mauritania, Sudan. I mean, you know, and the African Union ain't trying to do nothing about that. I mean, it is apparent that our people would never identify, at least not in my lifetime, on the broad scale level of uh, when you when you talk about blacks in the entire international diaspora. Now for us over here as descendants of slaves born in America, we we must in order for us to even be able to demand anything when you talk about reparations, when we talk about just basic human rights, <clears throat> let alone some you know, uh, fake civil rights <laughs> <laughs> or fake affirmative action. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like we we really don't have, according to the Constitution and the 13th Amendment, 
And correct me if I'm wrong about the 13th Amendment, because it said that slavery still exists in this country if you are tried as an uncool criminal in their criminal courts of law mm-hmm. and convicted. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's still a back door to slavery. You see what I'm saying? That's still a way through the back door to slavery. Ain't no question about that. So, according to their constitution, which obviously that amendment is in their constitution, we are still under slave status. Mm. So, until we could get a state, like me and the brother have always been saying through the Operation Exodus Mississippi Project, until we take control of a state, we don't got no right like other people as Mexicans, Chinese, Koreans, mm-hmm. Puerto Ricans, uh, Cubans, Haitians, telling these white folks what we demand and what we want. Because mm-hmm. the first thing in their mind, as far as us here in the United States being concerned, as descendants of slaves born in this country, nigga, you still a slave. Mm. Shut up. Mm. Take these handouts. You understand? Take this money under the table, like with L. Sharp and Jesse Jackson <laughs> type cats, mm. you know? Uh, you know, and, 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 and don't say nothing while we gun these niggas down in the streets like we do every day. Don't say nothing while we lynching our brothers and sisters in Mississippi and North Carolina. Don't say nothing while we while we mass incarcerating our people in, in the millions, even for crimes they didn't commit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, you know, so this is why you got massively. Most of our leaders, so-called leaders, turn in a blind eye to all this. Then, like we discussed with this crack, crack epidemic thing, yeah. which has helped to clean out the clock of any type of morality or unity we had left, mm-hmm. even coming out of the civil rights movement. I mean, we can look at the or after effects of it and see the evidence for itself. That don't really need no support. I mean, but the fact that our people were so confused and can't see the reality of things and not realizing that, hey, listen, we need to get our heads from between our butt cheeks and wake the hell up. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't understand that we are still in this under status quo of slavery. And that hasn't changed. Only the times have changed. We are still under that status quo to this day. They still haven't took that three-fifths of a human law off the books, hmm. basically. That's still in law. So you, we're, we're, we're just animals. That's why they could do us any kind of way. So we're not in the position of those other people right. to demand anything. Unless we take control of a state, then we could we could demand, command all we want to. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about dealing with these white folks in this country, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if this is so hard to get our people to understand, like we discussed, before we got on air. Yeah. We're not going to do this through the embodiment of an organization or through the embodiment of an individual. Right. It's just not happening like that. We see what happened when we tried to, when we tried that with Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, mm-hmm. Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seals, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the list, Geronimo, uh, Jajika Pratt, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Meg Evans, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The list could go on and on. H. Y. Brown, mm-hmm. we, we can see that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So, like I said, you, you know, we, we, we are in a situation that we need to take control of a sanctuary. 
since they not going to give it to us like they give it to these immigrants right. or illegal immigrants coming over here, like the ones that's still trying to get across that border from Honduras. You see what I'm saying? So, like I say, we have to understand that we are not in the position of these different people. Even the Africans from the continent and the darker skinned people from the Caribbean who come over here could demand what mm -hmm. they want. That just show you how we are looked at. We even looked at below them in that circle. So, I mean, this, this is real. But uh, anyway, uh, the sister still got anything to say? Uh, the mic is on to you. Okay, so um, I I wanna I wanna um say that was a great point, and but I do have a disagreement in regards to the African thing about us fighting against each other and all this type of stuff. So here's the thing: first and foremost, um, Europeans have always fought against each other, but one thing that Europeans understand is that in order for them to be superior or to have a superiority that is not real is that they have to as a collective believe in it and they have to perpetuate it and once they do that once you do that as a collective then everybody else is going to fall in line okay mm -hmm. so so-called african people which i do honestly believe that black americans are not African. Mm -hmm. They were enslaved in Africa, just like we were enslaved in the so-called Americas. Americas. <coughs> we first and foremost don't even know who we are. Mm -hmm. And so that in and of itself is an enslavement. We keep talking about Africa, but Africa was a place in which we were enslaved all throughout Africa. There was no other enslavement in Africa except for the so-called African Americans. Ethiopians didn't enslave Sudanese. The Houthi, the Houthi didn't enslave the Tutus or the Tutsis. No, sorry, the Hutu didn't enslave the Tutsis. They had war with each other, but they did not enslave each other. So that's the first thing that we have to understand personally is that we're not African. We look similar to Africans, but we are not African. And anytime some white person or the Europeanized society gives you a name or an identity, you need to question it. And they told us that we were so-called African American. That's true. But if you do your further research, then you would understand exactly what I mean. Um, second of all, um, you said something about the the Caribbean. The people in the Caribbean are um, they are able to demand more. Okay. They are not able to demand more. The people in the Caribbean, specifically the darker skinned people of the Caribbean, which are the black people <coughs> of the Caribbean, are not able to demand shit. Dark skinned black people, and not even dark skinned, but so called, so called descendants of Africa, which are the same people who um, were enslaved in the same way as the so called black African Americans. Um, they don't demand shit. As a matter of fact, they are the lower class in their um, areas, in their countries. So the Jamaicans, the, um, the Trinidadians, it, it, that's the reason why colorism is so big in those places, because oftentimes they don't make a distinction between black and white. They make a distinction between color. If you listen to a lot of Caribbean people, they don't really have a disdain for whiteness, because again, they consider themselves to be all the same. It's just a color thing. When in reality, it's a race thing. Um, so black people that come from the Caribbean islands aren't able to demand shit. I'm from Miami. And black Cubans get treated like shit. Haitians damn sure can't fight for anything because they fought and won against the Europeans that tried to um, keep them enslaved. Um, but they ended up getting overthrown or whatnot. But the point of what I'm saying is, is that Caribbean black people don't have any power. Um, the descendants of the slave owners of the Caribbean do. And the reason why Cuba has the most power is because um, Cuba had a lot of slaves. And so the white Cubans that are literally purebred white, 
Whereas in other Caribbean places, people are so mixed up and diluted. And again, that's the reason why they go by color. But in Cuba, they still have descendants, like pure descendants who are not mixed, that are crackers, that are pure blood white people. And so that's the reason why they could come over to the States and take over places like Miami. So we talk about, again, you talked about the, the Huey P. Newton and the, the Edgar or whoever you were talking about. And the reason why these people didn't um, or was not able to um, to overthrow anything is because, like I said earlier, you have too many other black people that think like Europeans and they hate themselves. And if not themselves, they hate black women and so forth and so forth. Just like the dude Cleaver um, that was in the Black Panther movement, he hated black women. And he was also a homosexual, which has nothing to do with how he's able to effectively um, lead black people into productivity, but he was not himself. He was lying. Um, so, like I said, he hated black people, black women in particular, which they are black people. So when you have groups like that and you have people like that, like even the Hebrew Israelite groups, they hate certain black people. They hate certain Hebrew Israelite groups. Hmm. You're not going to be effective groups of people. We could talk all day long, but that don't mean shit. As a matter of fact, a lot of the times people that talk on these conversations, it made me scratch my head because these usually black men that talk on these conversations like this are some of the biggest clones. And usually black women that talk on these conversations and are so pro this are usually the biggest bad witches that will suck a white dick as fast as one came to them. So the reality is, is that, yes, we could talk about what we know. I'm not even bitter about it or angry about it. I speak passionately about it. And that's the reason why my voice may be a bit elevated. But black people as a collective do not stick together. And so therefore, any black liberation movement is never going to work. It's never going to work. The reason, one of the reasons how uh, white supremacy has been able to keep black people comfortable is because if you've noticed year after year after year, or I would say generation after generation, or every decade or so, they end up um, giving out false prizes of liberation. And those false prizes of liberation are a car, um, cell phones, nicer phones, iPhones, the internet, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. These false privileges make black people forget that they are, like you said, are enslaved. And so people get so comfortable with the falseness that they have or the little trinkets, I'll say, that they have, that they don't want to lose that. They don't want to miss out on that. And so they're not going to say shit in or fight against any type of white supremacist system because they don't want to lose their nice iPhone shit. They got a nice iPhone. Motherfuckers ain't, not everybody got an iPhone. Um, they don't want to lose you know, the money that they get, they don't want to lose that touch, that, that closeness to white supremacy because they can walk around and look at another person that don't have and feel like they're better than that person or they're doing better than that person. And that's the reason why white supremacy lasts is because you have black people that may have more than another black person that can look at another black person and say, well, at least I'm not where that motherfucker is. And that's the reason why it's called levels. Levels is not given to any race of any other motherfucking race but black people to keep black, um, black people who have a little bit of something comfortable because they can still look at another black person and say, well, this motherfucker don't have. Furthermore, you have jobs that people have to go to every day that are ran by white people that got white bosses. If a nigga know that he got to go to this job every day and say boss this, kiss white ass in order to get a check so that he can pay his bills, him being on the black side and all that old type of shit when he's around with the door closed, he might talk on that shit. But if most people are getting paid by white folks, they are not going to say shit against white supremacy nor white people. It's just not going to happen. And even when they go into these closed environments and speak up against white supremacy, like some of these environments, like what we're all right now, motherfuckers is not walk around every day with that shit on their chest. Like they're just not doing it. They're just not living that way. You got motherfuckers that are sitting there and talk all that pro black shit, but as soon as a cracker walk past them, they smiling in this cracker face, trying to become disarmed or non threatening or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? So, as long as you have little small things like that that keep niggas in their place, motherfuckers ain't gonna do shit. Another thing, too, that's very powerful to understand is this white people are physically inferior to black people. And that is one way that they keep black people in their place. So if a white person is physically inferior, although they have done all of these diabolical criminal acts, 
perverted acts, yet black people are physically superior but have done way less diabolical and, and insensitive and murderous acts. Um, why is it that when a black person is around a group of white people or any white person, they have to disarm themselves to make that cracker feel comfortable? As long as they can give off this in, this impression that they're weak and defenseless and, you know, they're, they're afraid of being attacked, you will have niggas always trying to disarm themselves and feel as though their blackness is criminal. Even in small instances where you're just walking past the cracker at a store. So as long as we, like I said, as long as there are small instances like that that occur that keep black people in a state of feeling as though they are criminal, then then coming together and, 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 and trying to fight some shit, it's not going to motherfucking happen. Especially when these crackers got badges to kill niggas simply for being black. You guys, that's another tactic to keep motherfuckers in their place. Stay in your place, boy. All that shit, that type of shit is cool and it's good, but if it's not going to be implemented and, and effectively put out there to where some shit changes, it's a waste of motherfucking time. As long, the only thing that you can really do is make sure that you ain't becoming, you ain't no motherfucking slave. Now, another thing, he pointed out the three-fifths law about black people being slaves and being seen as slaves, and they won't give a fuck what a cracker say, period. He, he died just like you die. He live and live and breathe and breathe just like you live and breathe. Fuck them crackers and fuck what they say, period. The only type of enslavement that niggas got right now is in a motherfucking mind. If a motherfucker still believes that he is enslaved because the crackers say he's slave, if it's a if a motherfucker still believes that a half black, half white person is black because the cracker said that that motherfucker's black just because they got a black a drop of black blood, if motherfuckers keep talking about how crackers see motherfuckers, that's the part of being enslaved. I don't give a fuck what type of point these niggas trying to make. To keep trying to use the the uh, statistics, the um, the ideologies that these white folks use just to make a point is bullshit. Fuck a cracker. Because the reality is, is that those motherfuckers are Neanderthal and have Neanderthal DNA, which means that they are actually the less of the human of the black species. And so are other races of being. That's the reason why they don't fear each other. That's the reason why the black person with the kinky hair is the most feared, because you are the most human. That's the reality. Animals are going to always have fear for a motherfucking human. That's period. So, I say that to say this, fuck with a cracker thing, and if a nigga constantly thinks about what these white folks think, then that motherfucker needs to be questioned, period. All right, all right, okay. Uh, gonna take a slight break here to make a disclaimer. Uh, brother, uh, let, let, me, let me say this, let me, let me say this, uh, let me say this very, very quickly. Um, I wanna uh, make a disclaimer real quick. Um, the the views and the, and the, and the, the views expressed here are not solely uh, not necessarily those of Operation Exodus Mississippi. This is just a this is a separate program hosted by the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Operation Ex Exodus Mississippi is simply the uh, using the vote, inspiring the people of the state of Mississippi to use their vote in order to take control of the politics, the laws of that. Of that state in order to benefit dark-skinned people, the descendants of slaves born in America. That's that's all that it, it simply is. And then you work whatever else comes after you work with that after you gain power. Because without any kind of power and, 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 and anything else, it doesn't mean anything. You have to put yourself in a uh, position where we can actually have power. And if you take, can take control of the activities of a state, that's the most power that we as a people have ever had in our sojourn in America. So uh, Operation Exodus Mississippi has nothing to do with religion or spirituality or personal beliefs. What I just described, that's all that, that it is. Also, um, I wanna say to the sister, I'm very happy that you're here and I'm glad to hear your passion and how you're speaking. But I also wanna say to you uh, that on this program, we, uh, I want you to be yourself, but we I, I really don't like a lot of profanity because we want this uh, program to be where, you know, uh, very young children can listen to and, and learn. And I would hope that your words, you would want everybody that's possible to hear your words. I would hope that you would want them to 
be able to listen to that. On this program, you know, I'm very sure you're very intelligent. We don't have to be so profane, you know, with your words. And I would really appreciate that. And the audience and the listening audience would, would appreciate that. Uh, I, I don't want nobody to not be themselves because I know a lot of us, you know, we come from that environment and, you know, we cuss a little bit and blah, whatever. That's just life in the United States of America. But again, on this platform, you know, I don't mind a little bit, but when we start getting a little bit, you know, out there, I don't want our program to be, uh, you know, going in that direction. But I do appreciate your calling, calling and calling and giving your opinion. Lastly, I, I want to remind the audience that November the 17th, 2018, I, the, I have plans to be in Atlanta, Georgia with my sister, Rashida Strober. She's doing her play, Dark Skinned Woman's Revenge in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, for more information, you can uh, just click on the, on the link in the description box, or you can send an email for more information to the realities temple on earth at aol.com. And I'll get back with you. I would love if you are in the Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia area, somewhere in there. I would love to, for you to come out and, and uh, I would like to meet you in person. It would be really, really nice. I appreciate all the listeners and you know, all those who support uh, the Realist Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. And, and above all, we are also on a drive to organize Operation Exodus Mississippi. If you would like to become part of the organization, and organize this concept, which we will officially begin to kick this off uh, December the 9th of this year. If you would like to join the organizational team, if you just want to be a supporter, also email email us at the realities tip on earth at aol.com. You know, that, that type of information should be and will be put in the description box of this hangout after it processes, you know, after it uploads after the live. With that said, I have I have a, a few things I would like to say myself, but I'm gonna give the mic back to our assistant and minister um Talib so that he can can uh, reply to what our sister Brittany has said. And again, Sister Brittany, I'm happy that you're here. Thank you so much for being with us. So brother Talib, you have the mic. Yes, uh, is the sister uh, still there? Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, no, okay. okay, I just wanted to kind of address those vital points that the sister made along with the, uh, you know, what I'm going to say as well. Um, I, uh, I, I, I traveled the country over the years, okay, and I've lived also between New York City and Miami, Atlanta, up and down the East Coast. And I know about the experience of the Latino population and uh, in this country, and I do realize that the darker skinned Latino uh, you know, get more Latino, black Latinos, not the, when, you, when you say darker skin, you have to understand that they're darker skin Sister, Sister Brittany, Sister Brittany, don't, don't cut them off. Let them speak. I, well, I, I prefer to say darker skin, you know. But anyway, uh, darker skin Latinos, like you mentioned, the Cubans, the Haitians, the Jamaicans, and, and uh, the Bahamians, and you know what I mean, so forth and going on. Uh, yes, I realize that they have a very, very, very uh, you know, low uh, consideration when it comes to the mains because of their skin color in this country. Okay, I do understand that, and I also know. But that's not. That I'm they, sorry, but that's not what I said. I'm sorry. But anyway, but anyway, uh, I do understand what you, what, what you, where you was directing that at. In terms of them being more or uh, less privileged than the uh, colored skin Latinos, okay. I seen it in Miami. 
And I'm sorry, could you address what I said? I just want you to understand what I was saying. I didn't say that. I said African, so-called, the so-called African which are black Hispanics and there are European Hispanics that has nothing to do with color, that's a different race. Okay. So I'm okay. Gonna, you're gonna address it. I just want you to I just wanted to make that clear what I was saying because I didn't say anything. I, I, the, the, color has nothing to do with it. Okay, but but then you mentioned that that in this country that the black Haitians and the black Cubans uh, you know what I'm saying, are not uh, able to really demand as much as... Well, I, well, let, me, let me put this phrase up. The reason why I say it, black is because <clears throat> people usually understand that black soap means the so-called people that are of African descent. I'm not talking about the mixed ones. I'm not talking about the European ones. I'm simply talking about the so-called African ones, the ones that are actually were descendants of slaves. Okay, I get you. I get you. I get you. Okay, well, yes, yes. The ones that were actual, as you say, descendants of slaves, which is true. Yes. They definitely uh, get discriminated against in this country, just as much as those of us who are dark skinned who are descendants of slaves born in this country. Yeah, but dark skin doesn't have anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to continue you addressing my points. I just want to say this too that dark skin doesn't have anything to do with it it's your if you are so-called of african descent as the, every every colonized place on this earth tries to put it so you can be light-skinned and if you are black and clearly black you're going to be treated the same way as a dark-skinned person so that's the reason why i clearly oh, say oh, well, white one okay well when i say dark skin sister i'm speaking abroad over abroad i'm speaking about the lighter skin complexion ones the ones that are brown skin complexion, you know, that type of thing. Okay, so when I say dark skin, I'm not just speaking on the ones that's darker, darker, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm I get it. about the ones, okay, that are overall considered as descendants of slaves, which they are. Okay, yes, they do get treated. The way they, that they get treated discriminatorily in this country, I've seen it over the years, and I understand clearly what you mean, okay? And, but the fact is that all I'm saying is this, is that, yes, we should not consider ourselves as slaves mm -hmm. just because the cracker said. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that we are in the position that we cannot call shots mm. until we put ourselves in a position to make demands. In our minds, well, here's yes. the thing. I, in you our can't minds, call shots. Literally. You can't call shots for a group, but you can call shots for yourself. You can't call shots for a black person that is so enthralled with white supremacy that they agree with it because you would be killing yourself for somebody else who doesn't care for you or care for themselves. But like I said, you can call shots for yourself. What, sister, let me ask you a question. What other time you have known in our history as a people in this country mm -hmm. that on an individual level we seceded even for the benefit of, of all of our people? What's the question? That you were asking? Because I, I didn't understand. What, what was the question? Since you, want to mention, since you mentioned being the individuals as far as making demands as an individual with a mindset that you're demanding that you're respected as a human and treated as a human. You know what I'm saying? And that when you were saying something about standing up for other darker skinned people, with, with the mindset that don't have the same mindset as you have, okay, but at the same time, you 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 know you 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 you, you demand yourself individually. What my question to that was: Whatever time in history in this country have you ever known us to be able to change anything starting from an individual basis? 
there's plenty of people. That's the reason why you have broke black people that have a problem with black people such as so-called black celebrities. And not all of them are assigned to, to white supremacy. But you have black people that get money and broke motherfuckers, I'm sorry, broke mm-hmm. black people have a problem with that because they think, well, why aren't these people giving back? So, I mean, there are plenty of people that make changes for themselves. <coughs> I'm not understanding what type of change in particular you're speaking of, but if you're trying to make something happen where you have to go to a white person, then that in of itself makes you three-fifths of a person if you believe that the only way that you can have a better life is if you get it from some white person. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the reason, and I'm glad you said that, okay, because, see, this is the reason why the idea of the Operation Exodus Mississippi is very important. Where well, we can put ourselves in a position to where we can demand certain things. Mm-hmm. But we right, but you have to have a collective group of people that are going to go along with it. Just because you exactly. have an idea doesn't mean that everybody in that area is going to go along with it. And like I okay. said, there is no, okay, there's no, there's sister, not going to be. Let me, let me speak. Let me get through saying this. Okay, sister, yes. You got to have a collective group of people. I get that. Okay. But at the same time, when we get together like that, we are not asking them for nothing. Mm-hmm. You, but you're not hearing me, sir. You're not hearing me. What I was saying in the beginning, of the, in the very beginning of the call, was that in order for black people to make something happen without it becoming fraudulent, because what ends up happening with a lot of these so-called black leaders is that once they realize ain't shit and nothing is going to happen, they just start taking money from people, or they start to realize they're getting a lot of views, and they just start taking the views from people, so they just start making money off of the struggle. I'm not, what I am saying is that black people as a collective, as a, as a whole, I'm not talking about 10 or 15, I'm saying black people as a whole cannot come together with anything because it's too, the race is too divided. You have to have a unity within the entire black community, not just a, group, a specific area, but the entire community for anything to actually change to benefit the entirety of a specific community. Otherwise, it's going to be a fail as it, is, as it has always been, or it is going to become a fraud, a fraudulent scheme or a scam. It's, it's never are going you, to happen. Are you implying some similar to like what happened to the nation of Islam? As, as it began, you know, I'm just using that as an example. You could use any okay. black group that you could think of. You could use any black group that you could think of. Any black group that you can think of, even in the church, any black group. Again, I want to say this. Any black group that you can think of, any black organization that you can think of has never benefited black people as a whole because there are too many other black people that is against it even if you have thousands or even a million black people that support you still have another million of black people that's against it as i said very early on white supremacy in the united states in the uk in south africa they're all united that is the reason why they are able to dominate and take over other places of in, within of this world including the caribbean and africa as a whole the only race of the only place of place because you got to understand that even in africa is not working without uh, the United States government. The United States government is Europeanized and ran by white people. You know what I'm saying? Even China is in business with white supremacy. So what you have to understand is that there is no way that you can get a state within the United States to overthrow anything that these white folks are doing if black people worldwide are not going to be on board. White people have been able to overthrow Africa because white people all over the world outside of Africa banded together.
together. Okay, okay. Let me let me let me, let me yeah let me let me say this. <clears throat> okay. Um going back, going back to uh there are many who uh compare our struggle, and we was talking about this earlier, uh brother Tali. Uh, mm -hmm. they compare our struggle to those other people. You know, they compare our struggle you know, with, with, with Asians, and they always said, well, the Asians can do this, and the, and the, 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 the Guatemalans can do that, and the, the Chinese, uh, uh, the Africans. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. We are not them. If we, exactly. were, if we were them, we would be treated like them. We're not them. You're in a totally different situation. It's just like when you go to court. When you go to court, is like we was talking about earlier. It's the state of Missouri versus Talik. It's the state of Missouri versus Talib. Your case and my case, they may be they may be similar, but but we're right, not the that's same. Not but we're not we're not the same. So our and cases that's might. The point I was so, trying to get right. Out. Okay. Now look. Because, see, because our our cases might be similar. Matter of fact, they could be the same, but for some reason, you know, they give you probation and they'll send me to prison. So you can see, we you cannot compare our situation with other people, period. Because just because they're and similar. That's in regards to, to what? Who was saying anything about that? I'm just, I'm, I'm, it had, nobody didn't say anything. This was, a, this was from an earlier oh, conversation. Brother, brother, this is brother, another brother, conversation. Hold on for a second. Brother, hold on for a second. Sister. When you say that God can scan Latinos, do not. Uh, we go, and I'm going to say this and we're going to move on. But when you say that God can scan Latinos, do not get to really demand too much like their uh, white or color counterparts do. That basically, you was you were saying the same thing like me and the brother was agreeing on. Okay. And mm -hmm. all and all I was just saying was that yes, we do not have to consider ourselves slaves on the middle level. No, we don't. But at the same time, the reality is, and like you mentioned, not just in this country. But throughout the world, wherever we are, we are in the state of servitude. Because here's the thing, bottom line, and this is just to cut it short on my end, bottom line is the only reason why black people are in the state of servitude is because there's no unity, period. If black people was all to band together all over the world, we could overthrow the shit. There's no such thing as a white, white people shit ain't no different than a black boy. Black white people, it's because black people don't band together. Period. That's it. If black people was able to band together, then that means that as a collective, we will be able to throw some shit. Individually, you can overthrow some shit for yourself. You can make some shit happen for yourself. But as a whole, fighting for a group of people that'll leave you hanging is very stupid. Mm. And you know something? You, you just made a point. Addressing that, sister, you made a point, baby, right? because that's Talik. That's what I've been trying to say all along. Mm -hmm. You know me, when we, you know me, you always, when we get together and talk, even on a personal level, that's what, I, that's what I've been trying to get across. It's a waste of freaking time mm -hmm. trying to make something happen for a multitude of a people when, as this sister described in the numbers, like the millions. Mm -hmm. That ain't trying to feel the same thing. Right. That's, and it's a waste of time. That's when I say, that's like when I told you, why do we need to keep waiting on them many numbers to come together mm -hmm. on one common accord mm -hmm. for the betterment of us as a people when all we got to do is just, even if we got to get on the individual trail and get the hell up out of here. Mm -hmm. 
if it comes down to like to that because apparently and, and when you get out go where? where where would you go well you know sister i'm gonna tell you and i researched the situation with us around the world you know i know it's real messed up and especially in certain parts of europe like england france um you know germany to an extent uh italy greece you know <laughs> I, 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 and, and, and also, you know, Australia is a racist country as well. The country that they took from my Aboriginal, uh, darker skinned people. But, you know, oh, but they the Aboriginal even got nothing to do with me. But I'm going to say this here, sister, is that those, some of those countries, because I've heard this personally myself i've seen it on youtube and different search of the information mm -hmm. i've researched where darker skinned people who left america or even left the continent and went when you say darker skinned people i'm just trying to understand what you mean because there are dark skinned indians but they are not african uh, so-called african-american and therefore they will not be treated like a dark skinned person with woolly hair so i'm i'm not can you please I, I, make that I, I, differentiation I, 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 I'm talking about I'm talking about darker skinned people with really hair. How about that? Oh, okay. okay. So you, you didn't put a race to it. Okay. With really skinned hair. Anyway, uh, I uh, as I was saying, uh, when they go, they said that when they went over to certain countries, <laughs> even as far as places like Czechoslovakia, the Prague, and all that. Certain places you don't too much hear about in Europe like you hear about in Western Europe. They say that, yeah, it may be racism to a degree, but they don't feel it like they feel it when they're in America. That, well, that, let, that, me that, say, let me draw this point. These are some people who are descendants of slaves like us in this country. You got black people that love America and only hang around white people and they they marry only white people and date only white people and they'll tell any black person that's speaking against that that you're wrong and america is great right but the only way that they're able to feel that comfortable is because they have submitted to that environment which means that you are trying to um you are trying to blend into that environment, which means that you are going to do whatever it is that you need to do to make those people comfortable so that you are not seen as the opposite end. So I say that to say this, that when black people go to other countries, I'm pretty sure that there's racism there and I'm pretty sure that they may get treated bad. But because white people are, I mean, black people are so submissive and they try to make everybody comfortable. When you kiss ass, yes, you make people happy. If you don't kiss ass, then you get treated like shit. If you choose to uh, surround yourself with or around people that are not of your same race, right? So um, do I believe that it's better in chess? I think every white person on the face of this earth is racist. So if you're in a place where it's predominantly white, there's no fucking way that you're getting treated better. Now, I do know that there are some, that I've seen black people that when they get, when they go to China, you know, um, they're getting pictures of being taken of them. And it's like they get treated like celebrities. But then I've also heard in some instances where they get treated like horrible. Um, so regardless of whether you're getting taken pictures of or you're getting treated horrible or whatever the case, you're going to always be treated like an outsider if you are so-called, and I say so-called because you're not African, but we just going to keep it that way to keep it simple. If you are so-called African descent, African American, African Caribbean, you're going to be treated horrible when you go to any other place. That's just what it is. That's the reality of it. And this is how bad it is, is that white supremacy has the control to make it to where there are no black people in certain environments. There are there are not many black people in China. There are not many black people in, in, in certain parts of France or Poland or whatever the fuck. It's just not many. Whereas anywhere that we go, we are um, surrounded by other races and cultures because we have no choice. So um, I don't believe that when black people go outside of their areas or outside that they get treated any better. I just think that the ass kissing is probably turned up a little bit more. And when you kiss ass, and even if you get treated like shit, 
you know, of course, I turn their nose up and smile and be nasty and walk away and not call you a nigga. That don't mean that you're treated better. It just means that they didn't call you a nigga and they walked off. But black people just have this very um, docile, like, you know, will take almost anything, even if it's not too nice. But it, it's just <laughs> black people just take bullshit. So I don't, I don't think black people get treated any better in any other place. I think it's the same shit. It's racism is racism. Let me let me say this. Okay. This this is why this is why it's so important for uh if you're operation. For acceptance, hold on, hold on. Be let down. Right, right. Now hold on, hold on. Watch, watch this. Now I'm gonna say my little two cents, and uh, we got about 15, 20 minutes left, and I got to get out of here. But uh, I want to say this: the topic that we've chosen for tonight is the confused direction of black liberation. And I answered that perfectly, and, and we kind of got off the topic, but I answered that earlier. Right. That's the, that's the key word here, the confused direction of black liberation. You have to look at black liberation just like if you was driving your car. You know, you're going down the street. You cannot have the left side of your car go to the left and your right side of the car go to the left. It's all messed up. Different wheels going in different directions. You'll never, you'll never make it to the place where you want to go. It's just not going to, it's not going to happen. So that has been our problem throughout our sojourn here in America is that we have too many people doing too many different things. And it goes too many and, right, and it goes back you right. got too many people and that goes, want to be leaders instead of just coming together and leading together. Uh do you want me to click you off, uh Brittany? Now just just chill out. It ain't it ain't that exciting. Okay, just just be patient. Now uh, we can't we got too many people doing too many different things at the same time. Now, just like we have Operation Exodus Mississippi, I really doubt if there's any other solution that has been presented before the people that has everything that we really need because this Mississippi campaign has nothing to do with religion, has nothing to do with a political idea. It does not discriminate against anybody. This is an idea just like, just for all the people. Just like there was somebody in the chat room, they was talking about the Black Panther Party. That's what I like about the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party did things that benefit the community, black people, period. They did not try to convert you to a religion, tell you about Allah or Jehovah or whatever. It was just, trying to do something to change the condition of our people to make it better. And that's all Operation Exodus Mississippi is. To take control of this state by taking advantage of the political system, using your right to vote, which is that which you have the right to vote, something that could have been done a long time ago in the South if it was not for the terrorists, the domestic terrorism, Jim Crow, that ran our people up from the South, North, West, East, whatever. They would have been, they was on their way to do that anyway, to take control of those states. Operation Exodus Mississippi will put us in a position where everybody across this nation can, can participate, every man, woman, and child can participate. And when you are successful, no individual gets the credit, no group gets the credit, the people themselves get the credit. And the only way it can be successful is that they do unify and come together and stay in one accord. I was talking with Brother Talib earlier. We trying to organize this, this, uh, this uh, concept. And the problem is you have people that want to join and then they want to bring in these other little tiny things. You know, it's nice to think about a school. It's nice to think about all these little things. Those are little things. We're talking about trying to do something on a big scale so that you can get large benefits. That is what we need at this time. We need something very large and inspirational so that people can finally be inspired to be to have something with pride so they will, will get on the soul train and do what is necessary in order to change the condition. So you have people, even in our little group, we have people that come in and they want to suggest these little tiny things when you accomplish this great feat, all these other little things, 
that you're talking about. You can implement them once you get some power. There's nothing that you can do if you don't get power under you. you there's nothing that you can do unless you get to the point where people respect you. We're not respected in this nation. We're not even, we don't even respect ourselves. So we have to put ourselves in a position to be respected. And having a little music company, that's not going to get it. Have a little uh, company that's making maybe millions of dollars on the stock, that's not going to get it. You need something. We need something very, very large and big to get into this, into this thing that we call race. Something large, something that you can be proud of, something that you can speak about. Just like when they get pride, when they feel pride and talk about uh, our people built the pyramids or Timbuktu or all these other accomplishments. This, this great accomplishment includes all these different things and give you the results that we need. Going in all these different directions. It's a direction that everybody can get on. But again, it goes back to we have people, you know, the jealousy and the envy and all these different things. But see, I'm a realist because I understand that this Operation Exodus Mississippi on its foundation, and there are some, I'm very sure there are some flaws and some kinks that need to be worked out. But in its premise, it can get the job done exactly what we need. There's no doubt about that at all. But I'm a realist, and I understand that our people, we have a slave mentality and just came out of slavery not that long ago. I understand that. We have a slave mentality. So a slave cannot comprehend freedom. You cannot comprehend what you never had. I was locked up for 10 years. And the only reason why I fought for my freedom was because I understood, I knew what that was. But what if you never knew freedom? We talk about it, liberation, liberation, freedom, revolution. We really don't know what those things mean. We've never accomplished those things. We've never been in a position to, when they set our ancestors so-called free, they were not set free like a brother was saying. He said, we, our ancestors were just set loose. You know, it's a difference being set free. Being set free means that you are put in a position where you are taught how to be independent. Because if you're not independent, you can't be free. We were not taught that. We were learning, coming straight out of slavery, trial and error. That's what we do. And we still, and it's still trial and error. And it's still trial and error. We're still working on that, on that premise. Now, uh, this is where we find ourselves. So I'm a realist. I understand that we can talk to we blue in the face and nothing's going to change. But say for instance, if though uh, we are successful, when we talk about international, the international scope, coming from the power base of a state, you can easily go international. You can have relations with, with other states, I mean, other, other nations. And if things don't go from the from coming from the power base of a state, when you talk about, well, if you're not going to live in America, where will we go? Coming from the power base of a state during the time that you are making associations with other countries all over the world, you can strike up deals where you can make an organized exodus from your oppressor. There are those who want to stay, let them stay. But you can be organized instead of each individual, well, where I'm going to go, where you going to go. That's the same thing that happened to us in, in, during slavery. You know, that we were just set loose by the slave master. Where are we going to go? We, we don't know. But see, you, we are in a position to put ourselves where we can have an organized exodus if things don't work out in this country. Everything that we're doing, you're doing in this country, but also at the same time, you're planning your exodus just in case it ain't working right, ain't doing, doing what it's supposed to do, then you can also have a way out of it. So I just want to make that 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 clear. Because we do have something here. It's called Operation Exodus Mississippi. We do have something here that can solve all these, all these uh these problems that we're facing in this country. And the only way it can be successful, it has to be national. It has to be, it has to be where the people, and again, 
has nothing to do with religion, has nothing to do with political idea, nothing personal. It's just putting yourself, putting our people in a better, in this geographical area, creating a sanctuary, a sanctuary, a safe haven where we can operate, we can control the laws, take the laws out that's against us, we can change those laws and make it make this geographical area more beneficial for our survival in this nation. And when you're successful doing that, then you can look at states like Alabama and Georgia, wherever we have a high population of, of soul brothers and sisters, we can do the same things there. But again, I would tell you, um, all this arguing and, and back backbiting and, and, and fighting, whatever, we are letting time slide. And pretty soon it's gonna get to the point where, cause time waits for no one. We wanna be silly. We wanna argue and debate all day, whatever. Okay, well, you keep doing that. Now I also heard through the grapevine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this go. And we're gonna start wrapping this up. And maybe we need to have a part two. But I heard through the grapevine, there are other people who have heard about this concept, Operation Exodus Mississippi. Mexican, uh, Mexicans and some white folks, and other people, they want to, they thinking about doing the same thing, taking a state for themselves. Now, see, the problem with that, and that's what happens all the time. Here we are, we are given a good solution, a gift, and we reject it. What if, there's an old saying said that uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So you think that Operation Exodus Mississippi is trash. Well, other people get it and be successful. Do you know what's going to happen to us as a people in this country? You're going to become a permanent underclass forever. Your future generations will be a, a permanent underclass forever because all the other people in this nation smart enough to take control of lands and territory. You don't have to buy nothing. Just take control of it. That's all you want to do. Take control of it for themselves and looking out for themselves, and you're going to be on the bottom with nothing. Now, if that's what you want for your future generation, you want to be selfish and silly, then so be it. But all I want to do during my lifetime is say, look, I really, really tried. They refused. And I'm I'm cool with that. That's just the reality of it. But anyway, with that said, uh, we can have some closing remarks here because I, I really got to go. We got about seven minutes, seven, seven or so minutes. And, uh, you know, I always treat the sisters. Yeah, but I didn't talk to you after the show because that's why I didn't call to, to get online. You never told me I was in bed. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Did you want to say something real quick in conclusion, Sister Brittany? Yeah, I do want to say something in conclusion. I think that it is a great thing that you have the mentality that you have, especially after black people have burned other black people so bad mm. and all of the liberation movements that have been done prior to or previously before what you're stating that you want to do. So it's a good thing that you still have that that hope and that drive. And I think that if most people had that same um, passion or desire to have that type of um that type of unity, then that would be great. But unfortunately, uh, we just don't have that as a collective. Yes, and so, um, but I would never say don't do it or uh -huh. think of it in such a negative way to where it possibly may not work. Um, I would never talk about it or talk against it negatively. Mm -hmm. It will always be something to me that I should think is positive. Mm -hmm. However, because of how many times we have been um, not only played by people who appear to have revolutionary ideas, such as the Reverend Jesse Jackson and so forth and so forth, mm -hmm. but we have also, um, people who have had these revolutionary ideas that you have, have also been infiltrated. So yes. <laughs> any person that is trying to actually do something would really have to be... Um, be smart and also tactful mm -hmm. it's not always good to put your ideas out there like that mm -hmm. before they happen you know what i'm saying because what ends up happening is, is that shit gets shut down if you're really trying to do something things can get shut down and so forth and so forth or can get infiltrated early on so i think that it's always good to have that type of revolutionary mentality it's always great but for anybody who is wanting to join in it, who is not taking part in producing it, we should, just like myself, I'm being honest, I'm a little bit like, okay, skeptical, honestly. Uh -huh. But, you know, 
I'm on board, though. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Brother, brother Talib, closing words, brother. Closing words is this is that in order for us to succeed, we have to think on the lines of you know, not worrying about what other people think mm -hmm. or say. We have to focus on the task at hand and deal with it collectively with those that want to come together and those that don't want to leave them to the side. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. You know, just like we went through with the Maurices, yeah. like we went through with the Craigs. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Leave that to the side. We got to deal with this situation head on. You know, not in no drastic way, not in no stupid way, but in a collective, organized way. Mm hmm so that we could be able to succeed mm -hmm. in the goal that we're talking about succeeding in, so that we can have a new reality for us as a people. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the thing is, is that... And again, though, we have to be very mindful, and I do want to say this, we have to be very mindful that we're talking on a white man's platform about trying to be productive for black people when we are already aware that they have infiltrated groups that did not have public platforms prior to. So that's another thing to think about as well. And anyway, uh, I'm, it also, too, uh, we have to stop being uh, very, uh, when it comes to the have-nots among mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and the haves, we got to stop thinking we're better than each other. Because we're all in the same boat. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that until we realize that, then we we just going to be, you know, spitting out words mm -hmm. and, exactly. and no actual, and no actual uh, you know, tangible actions coming along right. to make this reality happen. And so, I will say that uh, I think that that's a very great thing that you pointed out, that it, there has to start being a differentiation between the have and have not, because if you want to be technical about it, right, when you said the three, four thing, if you want to apply that to something, then that's definitely what it needs to be applied to, because let's say, for instance, that it's something that is a technicality, that there's with three fifths or whatever, right? Then that would mean that even the niggas with the money are as well. So... Yeah, yeah, that, 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 definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Unless motherfuckers are comfortable with being the autumn feeders, this is one of the best autumn feeders with a few dollars, then that's a problem. All right. And, uh, we, yeah. we also we also got to stop uh, hating on one another too. Mm -hmm. Even when we ain't got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stop that. We got to stop that. Those that don't got nothing still hating on each other. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that said, y'all. We... I want to ask him one question. I want to ask Talib one question. Okay. Who, who me? Talib? Now, you get the black man. Let me ask you this. Why do you think, from your perspective as a black man, and from some of the things that you've experienced and what you've lost, what you, why is it that black people are so jealous and so hateful to one another? Hmm. You're talking. To, you're talking to Talib, right? Uh, yeah. The the other one. Yeah. The brother. Yes. Yes. Uh, sister, I can answer that. You know, sister. I, I wanna. I wanna. Yeah. It comes. I wanna quickly say it comes from the after effects of slavery, which I'm sure it does. But 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 I mean. It's, it's somewhere in, in, in within the core of our, our being that it's, it's so much self-hatred embedded in us that we just cannot stop self-hating on each other. <laughs> and I just don't get it. I mean, you know, I mean, like, like you say, white folks fight each other, but when they come together on a common knowledge thing, that's why they still running shit. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, but I feel like, uh, 
Yeah. Um, I find it interesting that a lot of us, although we're hateful towards one another, sometimes we do like to see one black person come up. But if we get too close to that motherfucker, we think that they're supposed to do stuff for us. You know what I'm saying? And if they don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And if they don't, then it's like, that's when we start saying, oh, they ain't real. Mm-hmm. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. And um, yeah. I just wanted to know what you're talking about. Now, also, too, what do you think about black men and black women that act like fat, like literally like fat, like straight oh, like fat? <laughs> like oh, straight oh, like oh. fat. Hey sister, uh, well, well sister, uh, I understand you. I understand. Matter of fact, I understand you, brother Talik Moore, because I live in a place called Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, you have these type of Negroes that I hear. So I understand clearly. You know, I'm originally from Detroit, so it's a big different gap. It's a different world. And I'm glad that since I've been here that I did not get away from myself like that, you know. But the, the, with the Negroes you just described, I got to walk out this door and see them every day. Wow. And, or, or like I was telling Brother Talik earlier, they don't say nothing to me until they get high and drunk. <laughs> Like, well, nigga, why you want to talk to me when you getting high and drunk? Hmm. When you sober, you ain't trying to say, say nothing to me? Or you in some white folks face or talking like you white? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this sister, yes, this particular sister, she's walking with this Mexican boyfriend, whatever he is. And she knew she kind of seen me looking, right? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm a man. I'm gonna look at a woman. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, what you expect? I mean, you know, come on. I mean, if we're, if, but anyway, it's like I, I don't know if she thought I was stopping her or whatever the case was, and she kept looking at me crazy, right? And the and I'm like, that ain't nothing but straight up pure deep self hatred. Right. And first of all, what do I give a damn with you about you being with him? Oh, with a person of another different ethnicity. That's not my business. My only concern for you is a sister that you should be free from this oppression mm-hmm. for 400 years of servitude and mass incarceration and lynching and so forth and on. You see what I'm saying? Well, my, my, my concern is not your preference or who you lay in bed with or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So my thing is this. She looking like that and I'm saying, man, these people have, in, in, in particular, this sister also, when she talk, you were swerving down. It's like heaven talking. Hey, when you listen to her talk, because I've overheard her talk. The son of the Heather. The typical Heather. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's sad, though. That's, you know <laughs> what? And, and but see, here's the thing. What confuses me, Tyler, is that a lot of people, like a lot of black people, they think when a person or a black person talks like that, that that's somehow, um, it sounds good or... Yeah. It sounds like what they made with it. I, I mean, I don't know. Because they just said it's funny. You know what's sad, though? Yeah. You know what's sad? Yeah. Because we don't take people serious until they sound like a pastor. That's real. That's real. That's real. <laughs> that is real because you know like you said and that go back to what me and him talk about as well when you get these pro-black brothers and sisters so called pro-black brothers and sisters trying to sound all pro-blackish and African and this and that 
you know what I'm saying, and all this, don't be some of the biggest cutthroat, ton of coat niggas mm-hmm. you could yep. ever think of. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, I will say this, but I will say this. I remember when I was at this I went to the Texas Hebrew Israelite. And um, you may not agree with me, and that's fine, but one of the things that I thought was very strange was that they had this biracial deal. Now, I know this the Hebrew Israelite, they say that if your mother could be any way, but as long as your father is black, then that means you're black, right? But it was just something about that that he did sit tight next to me. So I addressed him and I was like, Y'all got this half black dude here. And nine times out of ten, the only reason why he's even dealing with y'all is because he was rejected by white people. Like, let's just be very clear. And um, I was speaking a real proper, and I noticed that when I was talking like real proper with the man, they were so enthralled in what I had to say. Like, you know, it looks like they were happy that I was sounding that way. But that's why I was very sad because these people are supposed to be against that either. And then when I was telling them, I was saying, they were talking about how you know you don't have nothing. You look like you were in your own whiteness or trying to find a way to lighten up some shit. You know what I'm saying? So the point of what I'm saying is this. Even in the midst of so-called black, you know, whatever, whatever, Black people feel if a black if another black person they feel somehow it's like they crave that or they listen to that person like that person just has to know what they're saying you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I just find that to be very odd mm. that there's this um there's this disdain for you know what I'm saying? It's like you have to have a proper in order for some of your own people, even in these so called so black environments, to take what you're saying seriously. Mm. Have you read that? Uh, no. I've, uh, well, I'm going to tell you this, sister. I belong to this, uh, called myself, uh, trying to belong to this group called the Nuwabians, who was uh, under this guy named Dr. Malachi Z. York. I don't know if you know anything about that. Mm-hmm. But, but anyway, <laughs> you know, a lot of them, um, you can see in it, a lot of them was very Eurocentric in a lot of their ways. You know what I'm saying? They always talked about trying to be Sudanese from Africa or or trying to be Native Americans or whatever. <laughs> oh. and yet they never tried to never they never tried to take after them cultures. You see what I'm saying? Only when they was under the so called banner of Islam, like under the Nubian Islamic Hebrew banner, when before they renamed themselves Nubians so forth and on, right? Mm-hmm. Along with other different uh, names they gave themselves as an organization, which started being confusing. <laughs> and I'm glad we have this topic because this topic fits that type of scenario, you know? Right. And, uh, they, 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 uh, but they had a lot of Eurocentric ways about them as far as in terms of the individuals I came across. You know, mm-hmm. some of them still wanted to work jobs for the white man, even working as correction officers, working as bank security guards, but wow. trying to protect them white folks' shit. And I'm like, right. what? <laughs> yeah, but you call them devils, but you you trying to get a paycheck out, out of them. Right. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Especially working within the core of this type of system where you know they're oppressing your people at, like the Department of Corrections. Right. You know, and you got and you got a lot of them in the Exactly. Exactly. You know, so like I say, how in the heck are you gonna say you for black liberation and you still working within the confines of the system that's trying to multiply destroy our people every day? Hmm. Exactly. 
So this is this is the one reason why I'm glad I left the black so-called black conscious community alone in the first place. You know, in yeah, a lot, yeah. What you was gonna say, sister? That a lot of them are bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, mm. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and half of the men thinking white women on the law called out a fetish or want one. Oh, you talking about what, what, want another man? No, yeah. not white. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 okay. okay. You know oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Very true. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you know. And, and 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 according to their belief, uh, homosexuality is supposed to be taboo, but a lot of them seem to be on the down low too, you know, with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I mean that's their personal preference of business, but I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> in the in the nation of Islam, a lot of them seemingly uh yeah. Yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 in some of those folks he wrote that were uh, correlated into his teachings that was connected correctly to homosexuality, like the penis phallus and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Man, you know, all up on each other. Like, what? <laughs> you know, and that that even went open up my eyes more than like, what kind of pro-black organization is this I call myself belonging to all these damn years. Hmm. Right. I wonder why some of them people in that organization went so damn crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That is the truth. See, this is the thing with people, yeah. this is the thing with people, this is the thing with people fail to realize that a lot of people want to take, um, they take advantage of um, black people's want and need for answers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, when they see that your ass is involved in that bullshit, because the reality is most motherfuckers, see people already know, man, all that shit they talking about is not going to happen out of this lifetime. Mm-hmm. And so what they do, they try to take advantage of people's hopes right. of freedom and liberation. Yes. Right. And what they end up doing is fucking over a lot of black people. And that's when, just like with these churches, they get all these these young boys and shit like that in these churches and be turning them gay. And, or if not turning them gay, at least turning them out. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Because you, but they get to, they see that these people are kind of gullible. So, this is what a lot of these people do. They use all this um, supposed liberation shit, but it's really just to like lure motherfuckers in who are gullible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your ass is gullible, and you fall for the oath note. Yeah, because I'll tell you like this, I mean, and this is no disrespect, but, I mean, this shit is so woke the fuck up that it's not going to happen like how people want it to happen to us. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so, as long as we keep sitting there saying, oh, you know, we just fooling ourselves. Because there's too many niggas with cracker mentality. There's just too many. Talk about the niggas like Farrah Khan that want to get paid too, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Farrah Khan getting money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about the bees? That's what I'm trying to find. Mm. 
Oh, oh, hey, sister, excuse me. You say you're from Miami? I sure am. You know, you know that you know that temple that used to be on uh in Liberty City or that used to be. I heard about it. I heard about it. I heard about it. I heard yeah, about that it. That organization was worth two hundred fifty million. I was down there eighty nine one year before they knocked him off. That they had all kind of hotels all over the Miami on South Miami Beach. I mean, they had all kind of properties everywhere. I mean, they was getting money. Okay, you better believe it. Huh? I said you better believe I was getting money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> who was who is this you talking about? Huh? Who's that you talk y'all talking about? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I said, man, people just have this um, false ideology of what freedom is in America for a black person, and it's not what people think. Like, it's not. Hmm. It's just not. Your freedom is not going to come at the hands of another black man. It's just not. Mm. <laughs> we can talk about you know, coming together and all that, and that's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it now. But we have to be very realistic that I mean, it's going to take motherfucking money. It's going to take the, the brain, the mind. It's going to take a whole bunch of shit. Cause see, let me tell you something about black people, and we all know that black people are oppressed by cash. I don't give a fuck who you are. Mm-hmm. Remember to always scan your item for placing it in the bag. You do know that. Scan it. Yeah. Yeah. Remember to always scan your item for placing it in the bag. Continue scanning. That's the sad truth. Mm, mm, mm. But if you just sitting here talking about that, man, please. Yeah. Niggas are sitting here and leave your ass hanging. And I'm getting ready to leave y'all hanging because I'm getting ready to get out of here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoyed the both of y'all's yeah. presence yeah. for this uh, conference. Yeah, it was nice. And nice meeting you, sister. I've never talked to you. It was nice to meet you. And hope to have you back on board again. And uh, brother Tommy. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and listen, um, before you hang up the phone, Angel, we need, but I need, I wanted to ask you a question. That's why I called in the first place. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to dial out. Peace, everybody. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna All go right. ahead. Yeah, we 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 out of here. I'll catch y'all on the, on the flip flop. As always, in pardon, I wish us love, peace, and soul. Thank you, Syrian. Thank you, Pappy, for being in the chat room. Thank you for all the listeners now and in the future. Peace, y'all. And we are going off the air. Let me go. Up there.